Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Gosney, and I'm going to be talking to you about organic psychiatry. Here are our learning objectives. I'll be defining delirium and distinguishing between the acute and chronic confusional states. I'll offer a differential for acute and chronic confusion, and define dementia and distinguish this from the normal ageing brain. I'll be describing the symptoms and signs of dementia, and describing the pathology of Alzheimer's and vascular dementia in particular. Next we'll move on to consider the difference between cortical and subcortical dementias and outline the mechanism of action of drugs in Alzheimer's dementia. And finally looking at the psychiatric complications of head injury and outlining the psychiatric manifestations of epilepsy. I won't be covering these topics in this talk. You can see other lectures in the same series for information on the subjects of drugs and alcohol, Wernicke's encephalopathy and Korsakoff's psychosis. So let's first consider what is an organic psychiatric disorder? And we're using the word organic in a particular way. We're comparing it to functional psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorder. We're not talking about the freshness of your fruits and vegetables here. We're talking about psychiatric disorders with a physical mechanism behind them. Conditions such as head injury, delirium, dementia, and epilepsy. Or as the ICD-10 so snappily puts it, it's a range of mental disorders grouped together on the basis of their having in common a demonstrable etiology in cerebral disease, brain injury or other insult leading to cerebral dysfunction. The dysfunction may be primary, as in diseases, injuries and insults that affect the brain directly and selectively, or secondary, as in systemic diseases and disorders that attack the brain only as one of the multiple organs or systems of the body that are involved. So let's now consider why aren't all psychiatric conditions considered organic? And the background to this is the large amount of time and money that has been put into searching for physical mechanisms behind the functional conditions. An example is the search for genetic linkages or brain scan correlates with schizophrenia. I would say that there are four aspects to this question. The first is historical. For a long time doctors have considered that there were two main types of causes for psychiatric conditions natural and moral, and in modern day language we might say this is medical versus the psychological and social causes. There's a philosophical aspect to this question, and the central question here is, are mind and brain the same thing? Clearly if the answer to this question is yes, then at some point in the future all psychiatric conditions will be considered organic. But this question is controversial amongst philosophers and psychiatrists, and some would argue that the answer is no, and that there will always be some psychiatric conditions where there is no physical underpinning. There's a scientific aspect, and as I've said, a large amount of time and money has been put into searching for these identifiable physical causes. But finally, and probably most importantly to the working doctor, is the practical aspect. Does it change my management of my patient? And here I would argue there is a clear difference in the management between organic and functional disorders. Lishman, who wrote the definitive textbook on organic psychiatry, offered this as a working definition for organic psychiatric conditions. He said that there is a high probability that appropriate examination and investigation will uncover some cerebral or systemic pathology that's responsible for the mental condition. Why are organic causes important? Well, they're at the very top of our diagnostic pyramid, and that's because they're potentially rapidly reversible with appropriate medical care. When patients are misdiagnosed, there may be significant long-term damage. For example, with encephalitis, if this is missed, then there can be long-term brain damage. Patients who are misdiagnosed may end up being detained in a mental health hospital and being given long-term treatment with antipsychotics, with significant consequences both for the patient and for society.